Today, we'll explore the life of a man widely credited as a father of one of the most brutal and effective submission arts ever conceived. In this edition of Grappling Legends, Vasily Oshepkov, father of Sambo. To uncover his origin story, we'll start with his mother, Maria Oshepkov. It's important to mention most of the biographical facts in this video were taken from the book Oshepkov by Alexander Kulinov. Ten years before Vasily's birth, his mother was a widow living in rural Russia during the last decades of the Tsarist regime. She had a 10-year-old daughter named Agafya. On March 31, 1884, Maria was sentenced to 17 and a half years of prison with forced labor for an unknown crime she allegedly committed six months prior. She didn't have a criminal record, and according to the penal code in place, only a handful of crimes could result in such a sentence. Anti-government conspiracy, a crime against the Orthodox faith, or murder. On February 1886, she managed to escape while being moved from the barracks where prisoners lived to the factory where the forced labor took place by hiding under a convoy. She eluded the authorities for one and a half years until she was finally recaptured in the town of Kamishlov in September 1887. On July 20th, 1889, she received her second sentence of an additional 15 years of hard labor for escaping, accumulating a total of 32.5 years. Additionally to the punishment, 60 lashes of the whip. On October 23, 1890, she was transferred in a ship to the island of Sakhalin, once deemed the capital of penal labor. A local doctor who witnessed her receiving 30 of the 60 whiplashes commented on how she stoically took the inhumane punishment, one some males had failed to endure. While in prison, Maria met Sergei Plisak, a carpenter and entrepreneur that, unlike most carpenters and laborers in the island, was well off and owned two properties. She got pregnant and delivered Vasily while in captivity on December 25, 1892, but after the switch to the Gregorian calendar, January 7, 1893. Vasily was given his mother's last name. She was 42 years old when he was conceived. Given that the average life expectancy at the time and place was quite low, for a woman of that age, doing hard labor, successful childbearing was uncommon. On March 1, 1901, thanks to an amnesty, she was taken off hard labor and moved to a category of social settlers who were free inhabitants within the island but didn't have the right to leave. Mariah and Sergei cohabitated as a couple and continued to raise Vasily even though they were not allowed to legally get married. Young Vasily was sent to Alexandrovsk to study in quite possibly the only private school with a four-year program in the island. Their time as a family was short-lived as Sergei passed away in 1902. According to some sources, Maria passed away two years later on April 24, 1904 of kidney cancer and tuberculosis at age 54. Vasily was 11 years old when he became a double orphan. He inherited his father's estate and Emilian Vladiko, a man we don't know much about, became his guardian. At age 14, he traveled to Japan to continue his education at the Tokyo Orthodox Theological Seminary. Many sources claim that this was the result of the Treaty of Portsmouth that marked the end of the Russo-Japanese War. But according to the author, this was not the case. The mission had been receiving Russian teenagers since August of 1902, two years before the Russian-Japanese War started. It was clear to Vasily's guardians and teachers this bright young man needed to continue his education. And, given the Russian Far Eastern Territory's geography, the nearest large educational center to Sakhalin was Tokyo. So naturally, this was where Vasily went. The founder and head of the Russian Orthodox Spiritual Mission in Japan, Archbishop Nikolai, wrote in his diary, September 1st, 1907, a boy named Vasily Oshepkov, son of Sakhalin exiles, now orphan, came to our mission with a letter from his guardian and teachers of the Novomikhailovsky School in Alexandros Post in Sakhalin, requesting admission to the seminary. Order in the seminary was almost military, which was the case for most Japanese schools at the time. The seminary was obliged to follow the rules and guidelines of the local ministry of education. Special attention was given to discipline and physical conditioning for Japanese and Russian seminarians alike. Russians had to be at least 14 years of age, 
integrate to their Japanese classmates, dress in Japanese clothes, eat Japanese food, and of course, practice judo, the form of jiu-jitsu created by Jigoro Kano. Vastly integrated well, learning to write and speak almost like a native. In one occasion, he went back home for the holidays and shared his experiences in the seminary. His friend, Trofim Yurkovic, son of one of his former teachers, decided to join him. According to the author, he remained a good friend of Vasily throughout his life. As time went by, Archbishop Nikolai trusted Vasily as an excursion guide to Russian tourists in Tokyo and mentioned him in a few of his diary entries in a positive context, which was uncommon. The Kodokan, headquarters and governing body of all Japan's judo, was only a few kilometers from the seminary. Judo lessons at the seminary were taught by one of the Kodokan instructors, second-degree black belt, Okamoto. At the time, it was customary to rank black belts from first to fifth degree, but officially, the number of degrees was not limited to five. Here is an interesting entry from the Archbishop's Diary. Saturday, April 11th, 1909, at one o'clock in the afternoon, the seminarians were invited to assess their judo progress. Russian students fought first, then the Japanese. Nothing interesting for the audience, but it is very useful for them. In such a complete exercise, it couldn't be better. It has wonderful tricks too. For example, one was strangled by the opponent through the clinching of the abdomen and legs, like pincers, but it's not dangerous. The strangled was lightly pounded on the back and recovered. For historic context, at this time, the four kings of Cuba were in their competitive primes and Maeda had not yet traveled to Brazil. Here is another diary entry written one and a half years later. The traveling Major General Dalinov, accompanied by Major General Samoylov, wanted to see our schools. We showed them the women's school and seminary where the students demonstrated their jiu-jitsu fighting. Dalinov was not just any general, but chief of the Russian military intelligence. The practice of judo in the Russian military was not the norm at the time, but we know there was some interest as depicted in this 1911 photo of military personnel of the Zamursky border district during jiu-jitsu training. Okamoto invited Vasily and one of his friends to train directly at the Kodokan. They joined October 29, 1911. Training at the Kodokan was not for the weak and especially hard for Russians. Echoes of the Russian-Japanese War fed prejudices in some who perceived them as the enemy, when even Archbishop Nikolai was suspected of espionage. Some of the Kodokan students were Japanese military, intelligence officers, people who fought or lost brothers and sons in the Russian front. According to martial arts historian Mikhail Lukashev, Vasily was mercilessly thrown, strangled and joint locked and even with a broken rib he stood up, bowed and thanked them for the teachings. No one who came with Vasily stood the severe judo tests. Everyone ended up leaving the Kodokan. Vasily persevered, and on June 15, 1913, at only 20 years of age, a week before graduation from the seminary, became the first Russian and the fourth European in history to receive a first-degree black belt in judo. The news was published in at least one Japanese and one Russian outlet. This is the end of part one of this Grappling Legends bio. Stay tuned for part two. Don't forget to check out the new Brazilian Luta Livre t-shirt from Gotch Fightwear. The links are in the description or visit gotchfightwear.com. This video was produced by Didos and the World Submission Wrestling Federation. Join the World Submission Wrestling Federation. Visit our official website at submissionwrestlingarts.com.